I'm really excited about this video. The basic idea is how can we do time alignment of our speakers in a multi-channel speaker array like we do for Atmos in Nuendo without having to buy a separate monitor controller, without having to buy anything. Now this takes a few steps. First of all, we're going to play a click out of each speaker in turn. We're going to record it from a microphone in the listening position. We're going to measure the delay from the speaker to the microphone on each channel. And then we're going to calculate the delay that we need to add to make the speakers all play at the same time. And then we're going to enter those values into a plugin called Mixer Delay that's already built into Nuendo. It's so cool. Now I have to give a shout out to Andrew Sheps. I don't know him, he doesn't know me, but I follow him, I watch his videos, interviews, anything that he has to say, and he's doing Atmos mixing, so he's a good guy to follow. And in fact, I'm going to put a link to his video in the description below where he explained the gist of the method that I'm going to show you, at least as far as measuring the delays on your system. My front speakers are pretty close to me. My center speaker is probably the closest of all, but then I've got um, rear speakers and I've got overhead speakers, and probably the farthest away from my listening position are the overhead rear speakers. So all of these are producing sounds that are arriving at slightly different times, which means they're all out of phase, which makes a big mushy mess. And according to Andrew Sheps on the video that I was talking about, he says that the speaker calibration is important, but more important than EQ or anything else about speaker calibration is the time alignment. Since we can't make sounds arrive any faster from the farther away speakers, and we can't unadd the delay, we can only add delay to the speakers that are closer. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to figure out and calculate how much delay we need to add to each speaker so that they end up all arriving at my ear at the same time. So to automate this process, I created a project in Nuendo. Actually, I created two projects because I like to come up with the simplest possible solution and I wasn't sure which way would be simplest. One way, I'm using the Atmos Panner. I'm automating moving an object that has the click on it from speaker to speaker so that we can get all the speakers. The other way, I'm not using Atmos at all. I'm just using automated sends to route the click directly to each channel. And I like that one a little better because it's direct and that's the one I'm going to show you. But I'm going to put both of them uh, up on my website. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can download them and play with them and hopefully be able to use whichever one you prefer to calibrate your own speakers. At the moment, I have a 5.1.4 speaker set up. And I'm planning to add two more speakers so that I'll have a 7.1.4. Uh, just add the side speakers. So... I built the tool to calibrate the 7.1.4, so I've got two extra clicks in there for the side speakers, but you won't hear anything when that happens. Just wanted to explain that. So let's look at the software. We have the click track up here. I just copied a sound, actually from the metronome in Nuendo, and copied that for each speaker. I've automated these sends, and if uh, you can see what it looks like, I wanted the clicks to come out once a second, so I used a 60 BPM tempo and put one click on each beat of a 4-4 measure. Below here I have a audio track, an, a mono channel, on which we will record. I'm going to use the same microphone, so it's already, it's already capturing the audio, and that's where we'll record the clicks. So let me get set up for that. Okay, I've got the microphone in my listening position, so I'm just going to hit record. So this is the audio track that we recorded just now. The thing that jumps out at me is how different the level is for each of these speakers. Um, that's the LFE, so I wouldn't expect it to be the same level, but all the other ones should be uh, the same level. So I could probably use a tool like this just visually to help me fix that. But right now, I'm interested in aligning the time of the speakers. 
Because we're trying to align the timing of the speakers relative to each other, we're only interested in the relative delay, not uh, absolute delay. Every one of these clicks starts on a beat, and so we can measure the time from the beginning of the beat to where the click starts. I've added an extra audio track here so that I can go into the pencil mode and actually draw the time from the beginning of the beat to where the recording of the click starts. And then if I look up here, well I can see the length of that, but it's in bars and beats, so that's not a useful time, but we can change that. Before I go on though, I want to look at the mixer delay plugin so we can see what format we need to enter the values in. And we can see that we can express delay either in milliseconds to two decimal places or in centimeters. We want to use the milliseconds because we want to use time here rather than distance. Two decimal places uh, of a millisecond is, is one hundredth of a millisecond, which is the same as 10 microseconds. So the precision that we need to calculate our delays is milliseconds to two decimal places. What we can do is change our primary time format. We could try seconds, in which case we would see that this delta is 4 milliseconds, but it doesn't give us the extra decimals of precision that we need. So the only way we can actually get the precision that we need is to go into sample format. And then we can see that the length of that is 204 samples. And from that, we can then calculate the actual time because we know what the sample rate is. So the next thing I want to do right now is just draw all those deltas and then we'll come back and, and do the conversion. So now that I have measured the delays in terms of the number of samples, I've created a spreadsheet to calculate the delays in terms of milliseconds and to do some other cool things and make it easy. So this column has the, the delay in terms of samples. This column has a formula where it divides the column to the left by 48. Now what that's actually doing is it's dividing by 48,000 because we recorded this, the sample rate is 48,000 samples per second. So we're dividing by 48,000 and then multiplying by 1,000 to get milliseconds. So we can simplify that to just dividing the number of samples by 48. And so we have the results for each of those speakers. Now we want to look down here and see which one has the longest delay, which one is the farthest away from the listening position. And we can see that one of the, well, it's actually the top back left speaker is 9.31 milliseconds away from the listening position. So that's the longest delay and that's going to be our baseline. So we're going to take that number and type it up here, 9.3.1. And then this column gets calculated, and basically it's taking this it's taking this value, which is a constant, and subtracting the delay for each speaker to produce the difference. So basically we're going to be adding more delay to the front speakers than to the back ones, and for that particular one, the top back left, we don't have to add anything at all. So now we can go over to our mixer delay and you can see I've already entered all of those values into this column so that you wouldn't have to sit there and watch me do it. And that's pretty much the whole thing. Now I noticed a lot of discrepancies and I think that it's probably a good idea to run this multiple times, maybe do an average. I also noticed that there were like sometimes the left speaker would be seemingly too far more of a delay than the right channel. So I just want to clean this all up. But I want to get this done. I'm excited about doing this now because I'm going to soon receive a Dolby Atmos receiver. And I'll be able to run the channels, of the 7.1.4 the 7 channels through Nuendo and listen to them on the same speaker array. And I can switch back and forth between my own Atmos mixes and the Tidal and Blu-ray Atmos mixes. And that's just going to be super fun. Um, I expect to learn a lot from that. So don't hesitate to download the projects and the spreadsheet from my website using the link in the description below. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. I look forward to seeing you next time.